What's up, what's up, what's up? This is Improvement Coach Robert L. Caddy. It is 12 noon. This is Friday. And you are tuned in to the health of the nation, the health of the nation. And um, we have a very special guest here who will be joining us today. She's sitting in for um, um, Sharita Sweet, our community and political analyst, Sharita Sweet, who is out in the field today. So she had some work that she had to do. So hopefully she'll be able to call in today and, and get in with our conversation. So um, as you see, um, our guest is in the house. Ma'am, would you please go ahead? Um, introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Candace Nash. Okay, Candace of, is in the um, house. Candy Can Cakes by Candace Nash. Okay, Candy Simply Can Nicole Cakes. Photography. Okay, mm-hmm. I do a little bit of everything. All right, so she, um, Candace, she is actually a baker, and she also does some photography, and she is also a better client. Yes. So she is a better client as well. So. Um, So glad that you all joined us, those who are out there in radio land, if you're listening to us on the radio, or if you're on the KBOB 89.9 Facebook page, you'll be able to see us as well. So uh, again, we're just so glad you joined us. Again, this is the Health of the Nation Improvement Coach Robert L. Caddy, and we're broadcasting live from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the home of the original Black Wall Street. And I'm here to tell you, as usual, it is getting ready to happen. So we have a... um, a very informative show for you. Hopefully, um, there's going to be something that everyone learns, or some things that something that um, is going to be inspiring. Something, in a, of course, that's going to um, uh, lead to a better understanding, particularly um, to some of the subjects that are affecting the nation, some of the things that are affecting uh, our community, some of the things that are affecting our families, and and particularly that's going to be. Um, we wanted to dedicate um, the majority of this show. To what's going on with uh, COVID, okay? Yes. The current effects of COVID and what's going on with COVID. Um, we want to stretch that out and put some things in perspective with what's happening with um, uh, what's being requested of us, you know, be it the vaccine, um, just the effect that it's having on uh, uh, people and families in general, because um, we, we, we see a lot of that right now. We know that um, it's kind of having its way you know, with the community and the nation. So um, we did want to take some time and put some things in perspective about um, other things that we can do to prepare our bodies to yes. deal with what seems to be imminent, mm-hmm. what has seemed to be imminent. Um, if it's viruses or quote unquote, what we're looking at, um, a mutating virus, a strain that is mutating, oh, yes. you know, and um, um, one of the things I wanted to do, Candice, Um, before we get started, is just to really look at the word mutating, Uh just so we all understand. Let's 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 just take a moment so we can understand what we're looking at. You know, when 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 we say mutating. okay? and um, to define mutating, it says. Change or cause to change in form or nature. Okay, change or cause to change in form or nature. Okay, so what that's telling us is that if this particular virus is consistently mutating, Mm -hmm. that means that it's consistently changing. Yes. Okay, its form is changing. So that means that if we're coming up with solutions or vaccines or remedies, it's a possibility that they may not be effective. Oh, yes. There's a possibility that they may not be effective. Absolutely. So, um, um, I mean, that adds a, a another level of concern to it. And I think it's going to cause us to ha- to uh, accept a little uh, a higher degree of responsibility, if you will. And and it's, it's going to go higher than I, I believe what the uh, the government and what even what the um, the medical industry can provide to us as individuals. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Had, had you been um, uh, keeping up with that, Candace, at all a little bit? Well, yes, I have. Of course, uh-huh. I do. You know, try mm-hmm. to make sure I understand the different uh-huh. variants that are coming out. My cousin, she is a registered nurse, so she often talks with me about different strains that are coming out. Mm. So that's a daily conversation we have. You know, making sure we protect ourselves, wearing our mask, eating the right things. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you were talking about mutate. Mutations, mutating. Mm-hmm. mutating. Um, I remember when I was studying in biology in undergraduate, basically in nature, you see that fungi and bacteria, they compete with each other. So mm-hmm. you may have, you know, 
the fungi that win the first battle, but then the bacteria comes back even mm-hmm. stronger. So they have to mutate and that's how they survive basically. Uh-huh. And so that's just something that happens in nature. And it's not a surprise to me that this, that this coronavirus is definitely doing that at this okay. time. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, another word that we wanted to look up and just really put in perspective mm-hmm. along with mutating. Yes. Um, because this is something that uh, another word they're using to uh, refer, refer back to this type of virus. Um, and that is a uh, sub microscopic. Uh-huh. Okay. Not microscopic. Sub. Sub. Microscopic. Microscopic. Okay. Wow. Sub. All right. So that's smaller than microscopic. Yes. Okay. And, um, you know, when I look up the definition for sub microscopic, it reads mm-hmm. just to put us all on the same page so we can understand too small to be seen by an ordinary light or microscope Mm -hmm. too small to be seen by an ordinary light or microscope. Wow. All right. So that's little, (laughs) extremely small. That's little, (laughs) you know, and, um, you know, if, uh, for some of, some of the people who may have seen one of the advertisements that, um, I put out there to advertise this show, um, it was actually a photo of an old cartoon we used to watch when we were growing up. It was called The Jetsons. That's and right. um, you, you notice they had on the uh, the glass bubbles. Yes. You know, and I, and I thought about that, um, you know, if, if things are evolving to that level, you know, of course, that's just that's crazy, you know, to think that it's a possibility that you may be walking around with a glass bubble on with an, with oxygen connected to it. Of course, they were in space. Yes. So that's why they had on the glass, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, this whole situation, you can only consider you can only describe it as crazy, you know, to think that something is submicroscopic and consistently uh, mutating. Yes. You know, I mean, um, you damn near. I mean, to make sure that you're 110 percent, that you're not affected or that you don't get it, mm-hmm. you would damn near have to have on glass. Oh, yes. You know, and yes. um I don't know um, if that's all the way necessary, which is what brings us to some of the uh, the topic, uh, our topic today. Just some, some of the things that we want to put in perspective for uh, our, our our community, for our teammates, you know, for the city, for the nation yes. in general. Um, that uh, hopefully we don't have to go that far. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if things are consistently mutating, I mean, uh, we have to look at the um, you know this intelligent. Um, function that we have within the human body. Yes. You know, how intelligent it is and, and, and understand what it is, what it is requiring, what it is requesting of us and how we consistently go against what it needs, you know, to do what we want to do, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm basically set up to deal with a lot of these things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, even if let's just say, um, I thought about uh, when I was reading about mutating, you know, I automatically thought about uh, the term AI, Yes. you know, art, it's like this is a, some type of artificial intelligence where it comes in contact with uh, different cells and different proteins. And then it starts to find a way to attack that protein. Oh, yes. It finds a way where, where even this protein or this cell cannot affect me, you know, so it's consistently uh, mutating, you know, but um, my body, my immune system, it has the ability to respond. Yes. So if it has the ability, I have to think about my responsibility to prepare my body to respond. That's right. I do have the knowledge. Mm-hmm. The knowledge is available yes. for me to start to do what's necessary to prepare my body for battle. Mm-hmm. That's why I have an, an immune system. Yes, absolutely. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. The immune system, you know, it's it has everything that we need in order to be able to fight, but mm-hmm. we have to make sure that we have our immune system to, you know, ready to a point where mm-hmm. it's going to be able to be prepared to fight. Right. Because it's just like, oh, I'm going to go get my car and start in and go somewhere. But if I don't have a gas, right. I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with your body. You have to feed your body the correct thing so it will be prepared to fight. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a great way to, to, to look at it. I have to, I have to give it what it needs. So it's, so it's prepared for battle. That's right. I mean, and obviously all of us are recognizing right now just by, um, you know, some of the things that we're seeing, some of the things that we're hearing, you know, unfortunately, you know, for, uh, for many of us, there are people that we know who have caught COVID yes. and some of, um, 
dealt with it and it, it didn't have an, an extreme effect on their life. They made it. And then again, we know people who are not making it, Yes, you know, and that's, um, you know, um, you know, uh, I, I want to offer my prayers out to those people who, who, who may, who may have been affected in that way. Yes. If you know someone or if you are affected by someone, someone's death, yes. you know, by someone who did not make it, you know, I, I do want to, um, offer, offer our prayers here Absolutely. from uh, everyone at, at the health of the nation and everyone in the better program, you know, that, um, we're, we're sending out prayers for everyone to, um, hopefully that they're, they're covered at this time and that they have some comfort. Um, and also that we're, we're praying that, um, everyone recognizes our responsibility to do a little bit more yes. to step up to the plate. Yes. You know, I mean, even, even as we're asking, asking God to cover us, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the strength to have the responsibility and the discipline necessary for me to go into battle to be the person that I'm supposed to be and to use the ability that I've been blessed with and hopefully to influence and inspire others, you know, which is what basically we have been doing in the better program. That has been our goal from day one. Absolutely. You know, what, what can we do mm -hmm. while, while we're improving ourselves, hopefully we can inspire others to do a little bit more, Absolutely. you know, um, and, 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 and that, that, that's pretty basically what our program has been about. And, and I know you've been on a, uh, a health journey, you know, everyone has seen it, the look, you know, but um, on the other end, you know, like we always say, if, if you can see it, there's some other things going on inside as well That's that right. are even more impressive. Oh, yes. You know, if a person can see it outside, you know, um, um, uh, can you tell us, tell us a little bit about, you know, just how you have felt through your journey. If you can remember um, a certain time when you felt away and you got to a certain point in your journey and you felt better or you got to a certain point and you didn't feel so good, you know, yeah. tell us, tell, tell us a little bit about that, Candace. So my journey is not one that's, you mm -hmm. know, instantaneous and mm -hmm. all of a sudden in two or three months, wham, bam, I'm, you know, this amazing new person, you know, it takes a couple of months, a mm -hmm. couple of years. So I've been with the better program for quite a while, but I just remember, um, you know, always thinking about what am I going to eat next? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so hungry. Mm -hmm. What am I having for dinner? What am I mm -hmm. having for lunch? Mm -hmm. And it's, at some point you get sick of that because right. it's just like, I, I don't need to be ruled by food. Say that again. I do not need to be ruled by food. Does somebody out there hear that? I don't have to be so ruled you by food. Uh, before we move on, let's just hit that real hard. <laughs> that we do not. I mean, because we are. Yes. You yes. know, we're always looking for an opportunity. You know, oh, what's yeah. next? Where the food? You know, exactly. yeah, we can hardly coexist with each other. Where's the food at? Exactly. What is we, you know. And when that, we have family gatherings, all we think about is food. Yeah. When we get around each other, all we think about is food. Exactly. I mean, ain't no food. It's time to go. But, but what was my wake up call was when my mom told me, she said, you are not selective. You put everything you see in your mouth. Mm -hmm everything. Mm -hmm. You just eat everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's what really made me want to make a change. You know, contacted uh, Coach Caddy, did my consultation mm -hmm. and I thought he was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, I don't know about this. You know, I've been at other gyms, mm -hmm. worked out before, and but nobody told me all this, this is totally Totally this different. Kind of stuff. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand what he's talking about. He's talking about breathing. I'm trying to talk about my weight, how much I weigh. I need to lose this and lose mm -hmm. that. And he was just like, no, we need to get you to breathe. And, um, you know, just on that journey, I did get a little frustrated because I knew mm -hmm. how to do certain moves. I knew how to pick up weights and do this. And coach is like, no, breathing is the most important thing. First and, and foremost. And so that's what I did for at least six months mm -hmm. was I breathed. You know, I, I didn't pick up, lift the heavy weights that I knew I could lift. Mm -hmm. He had me breathing. And so um, I didn't know this, but I read an article. And after everything coach had taught me, the article said, you know, people think when you lose fat, you, you know, you get you get it out of you when you use the restroom. Mm -hmm. No, it all comes out in your oxygen. So right. I was like, this is just confirmation of everything coach has been saying. Like he really knows what he's talking about. And then, you know, on my journey, there were some days I didn't want to go. Some days I was like, well, it doesn't matter. You've made a commitment and you have to follow through with this for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's always been for me, not for, you know, my husband, mm -hmm. not for my kids. It's for me and the quality mm -hmm. of life that I want. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't want to feel pain in my knees. I don't want to feel exhausted when I walk up the street. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I want to be able to race my kids. Right. You know, and that's something I can do now and not be out of breath. Mm -hmm. I can go up my stairs in my house and not be out of breath. Uh -huh. So this just some certain certain things, you know, it's really helped me mm -hmm. uh, in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, the weight loss is an addition. It's right. a it's a plus. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, even when you get frustrated, you mm -hmm. remember and focus on those goals. And the main thing I'm thinking about is everything I'm doing this month is going to reflect next month. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. how I stay with it. And, and let me ask you this again, Candace. What about um, just just feeling, you know, yes. how you feel, oh. uh, energy levels. Um, once upon a time when it was a lot more difficult to breathe, yes. you know, and, and you could actually see a difference, you know, where you could actually do more work and you could, you know, go go a lot longer doing certain things. Yeah. You know, what what about the just the difference in the feeling? You know, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, feeling? So when I first started, um, actually a few years before that, I, I'm the type of person, I hate naps mm -hmm. and I started napping throughout the day and okay. I'm like, why am I napping? So I went to my doctor and I'm like, why am I taking all these naps? And I didn't really get, you know, an answer or any type of, Oh, you need to do this and do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course, you know, just tired and lethargic all throughout the day, mm -hmm. but you know, starting the better program, working out, my energy is at an even kill. It's level. My stomach's not like, you need to eat this. You need to eat that. Of course, it wasn't easy. You know, you get those. We got to have chicken wings. We got to do this and do that. But just the feeling is just outstanding energy all day. Mm -hmm. um, my my mind is much clearer. It's easier for me to think and think about things and breathe. It's just, yeah. I just feel like a different person. I, I feel younger. Yeah. I feel younger. And, 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 you know, the thing I really wanted to lean in on is the fact that, um, when we talk about COVID, one of the main things, one of the, the main challenges for people who um, who get COVID mm -hmm. is that they have problems breathing. Yes. They have problems breathing, you know, so it's causing some challenges with the respiratory system. Absolutely. It's causing some challenges. And, and of course, once you breathe it in, of course, it's going into the respiratory system. And the problems with breathing, of course, they create a, an abundance of other problems, mm -hmm. you know. So just going back to the importance of of even when we talk about fitness, you know, yeah. I always tell people the first thing about fitness, unfortunately, people just see people lose weight, Yeah. you know, but um, first and foremost, we're working on breathing. We're getting our lungs in shape, right? Yes. You know, and 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 as, as we talk about the uh, the imminency, the, the greater possibilities of people experiencing COVID, me, you, whoever the hell. Oh, yes. You know, I think I know for sure that we would have a better chance of dealing with it and mm -hmm. being victorious. Absolutely. Even not even taking a step back. If my body is prepared, if my lungs are prepared, oh, yes. if my immune system is prepared yes. to deal with this, I may, I may not miss a step, mm -hmm. you know, whereas in the, in the, in another instance, you know, I, I, I may not be in good health. Yeah. You know, and that's basically what we've been seeing a lot of, you know, that's I think that's why a lot of the, uh, the statistics say, um, the elderly, mm -hmm. um, people who just who are not well, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's very hard because their bodies are stretched thin. Oh, yes. dealing with so many other things. Yes, you know, uh, of course, if I haven't been uh, working out, I haven't been breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, if I haven't been eating right, mm -hmm. and my body is, you know, I'm I'm full of acid and I'm full of mucus, oh, yes. and now I'm trying to breathe, and now. Um, you know, my energy has been tied up in digestion mm -hmm. all the time. Poor little old heart, poor yes. little old pancreas, oh, yeah. poor little old liver and kidneys, mm -hmm. you know, and they're struggling. So um, I think, you know, when we when we talk about this and we start putting in perspective what it means to be dealing with a sub microscopic, mm -hmm. consistently mutating virus. Yes. I mean, what are we what are you going to do? What are you going to do? get a booster every six months, mm. get another vaccine shot and then another vaccine shot and another vaccine shot, yeah. you know, um, or do you start to prepare your body Absolutely. for battle? Prepare for battle. You know, that's, I mean, what, that's what every good soldier does. Okay. All right. going I, to I, I, need, I need to prepare for battle. And, yeah. and hopefully I think we might need to work a little harder on inspiring people and helping them to know that they need to start to prepare as well. Yes. Um, I, 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 I can't just do any and everything and then just expect to go get a vaccination and then go get a booster and go get a booster. Let's just say this damn thing continues to mutate on your ass. Exactly. What you going to do? Hmm. Spend your life taking vaccines and getting boosters. Is that what it is? 
you know, let's just say. Yeah. I mean, um, or I can make the choice to do better. That's right. You know, and I'm not saying that. Um, I mean, we will have people who will say things like this. Uh, well, uh, there was a guy and he was fully healthy and he ate well and he this and he still got it. And, you know, I mean, hell, there's been people fall off of, uh, uh, 50 story high buildings and they live too. That's true. But it ain't going to happen often. That's right. One in 10,000, one in 50,000. I'm just saying your chances are better. Our body is prepared if we would just give it what it needs to do what it's supposed to do. Absolutely. You know, give it what it needs what it, as, so it can deal with what it's supposed to do. I mean, and, and you know, as we talk about it, we see where it's affected the whole nation, right? Oh, yes. We're talking about business. We're talking about people's work life. We're talking about oh, people's yeah. home life. We're talking about the kids. We're talking about yeah. everything. You know, it's just the trickle down effects. It is. You know, the trickle down effects, the trickle down effects of you knowing someone who didn't make it. Oh, yes. I mean, understanding how that can have an effect upon you and lowering your immune system. Right. Absolutely. Especially if it's someone who, you know, or someone you cared about. Oh, yes. And now you're going through stress. Right. That's right. And your body's producing an abundance of cortisol, which is taken down your immune system because of the biochemicals, how cortisol affects cells, That's right. affects white blood cells, which is what we, what our body uses to attack these viruses. So now I'm susceptible just from stress. Oh yes. You know, some of us are be making ourselves susceptible because of stress. And on top of that, I'm not engaged in a, uh, a proper diet mm -hmm. to, to assist my body. That's right. And I'm stressed out. Oh, yeah. Let alone some of the other addictions people had even before COVID, mm -hmm. you know, could have been depression, could have been anger, could have been anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these negative, negative uh, addictions oh, yeah. that have an effect upon the body. So, um, you know, that's just that's just the psychological part. Oh, yes. You know, so um, I, I'm just saying uh, uh, and, and we and it go, again, we're going to go back to breathing. Yes. You know, I mean, what's what's impaired first? What is the main challenge here when we start to talk about COVID again? Breathing, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that, it, that that's important, you know. So, um, I mean, and, and breathing is um, even when we talk about the psychological challenges. Right, Candace? I mean, you get upset. I mean, ha, ha, is there is there other ways that you have employed breathing just to get through what you do, to uh, be who you are, to be mm -hmm. a mother, to be a wife, to have a job, to be in school? I mean, that's a lot. How the hell you do? <laughs> How the hell is this happening? We don't even want to. We don't even want to talk about that. We do want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. There's some. We got someone calling in. Uh -oh. I think. Okay. Hello. Who's who, who's on the line? Hey, Coach Patty. This is Sharita. How are you? Oh, okay. Hi, Sharita, Sharita Sweet has joined us. Hey, Sharita. How are you? Everything working out okay out there? <laughs> yeah, everything's working out okay. So I can be in the studio today. Already. No Already. Alone. Beautiful. I'm glad you called in. Did you Did you have something you wanted to throw in this uh, conversation? Have you been listening? I've been listening for a little bit um, as okay. I was doing some training and it just finished. And okay. Stuff, and it sounds like you were talking a, a bit about COVID. Yeah, we're, ta uh, we're talking about COVID. And um, actually, I was just talking to Sharita about breathing mm -hmm. and just kind of putting in perspective then again, the importance of breathing, how it um, instantly has an effect upon the respir respiratory system, mm -hmm. which causes problems with breathing and how um, a lack of oxygen can basically have an effect upon us psychologically. So Candace was uh, mm -hmm. just she was just in the process of putting some things in perspective with how breathing has assisted her with being and doing yeah. all that she does. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. It's supernatural. You know, if you think about all of the, I mean, you know, your wife, um, you got three kids mm -hmm. um, you're yeah. in school, mm -hmm. um, you yep. stay, you're engaged in your fitness journey, mm -hmm. you know, and some other things, you know. Yeah. So, so, I mean, tell me. You know, for those because we don't want people out there creating these uh, uh, negative addictions because they are stressed out and making themselves susceptible to COVID. So, 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 tell us a little bit about this. You know, how do you employ uh, proper breathing? So, um, before I came to uh, the PETA program, learned that breathing is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did have an addiction to anger. Okay. Um, looking for things to make me angry so I can argue, mm. um, looking for, you know, things that trigger that, that, that anxiety. And then mm. when I didn't have the anxiety, I got upset. Mm. I was just like, why is everything okay? Mm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Why? And so, you know, coach helped me identify that and definitely implored me to start breathing. And he's just like, you can't be angry if you're breathing. Mm -hmm. So definitely, you know, 
it seems corny, mm -hmm. you know, but breath, breathing in and then breathing out a couple of times. I mean, it helps adjust my behavior and yeah. really, really, really helps me to calm down before I start looking for something to make me go off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or act crazy or right. tell somebody off or mm -hmm, scream mm -hmm. to someone. I mean, I mean, a lot of us, a lot of us have that, you know, we have to deal with that. And, and, um, you know, that's why we say, go take a woosah moment. You know, people go yeah. do yoga, go do some, go, just go do something Absolutely. to get some oxygen to your brain so oh, you yes. can get control of your mind. So you can get control of your emotions, but we're just, you know, kind of leaning on the importance of breathing and how COVID actually affects our ability to do so. Oh, yes. And how if we're not doing it even before we get COVID, you mm -hmm. know, it can make our body susceptible, especially if we're dealing with any of those addictions, yes. the anger, the fear, the depression, the anxiety, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So, um, again, this this attacking the respiratory system, um, rendering it uh, almost inoperable. You know, we know how important mm -hmm. it is, you know, just to life. You know, in, in general. So um, with hearing that, Sharita, that, that, that's what that's where we're at right now. You have anything you want to you want to add to that? Um, I mean, I mean, I know, honestly, I agree with Candace. I mean, mm -hmm. breathing, as you've taught us in itself, is the most important aspect in life outside of just living life. But losing weight and um, gaining your own uh, sense of self, you know, depending on what stresses or stressors are attacking you at that time. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, and even as we're going through this COVID scenario, having your lungs, you know, strong and healthy mm -hmm. does help fight through it much better because a lot of these people in the hospital are on respiratory machines, mm -hmm. are having to get, you know, oxygen help, um, are getting additional oxygen, you know, boosted into them so that they can live. And so having strong lungs um, is very important in knowing how to breathe on a constant basis, not just knowing how to breathe, but really taking care of your lungs and making mm -hmm. them stronger is important right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you're saying important right now. I mean, would you say it's, it's more important than ever? I mean, I, in your lifetime. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because, I mean, as much oxygen as you can get to your brain, um, get to your muscles and so forth, it opens up airways, it opens up, you know, um, you know, uh, well, what am I thinking of? Dilators in, uh -huh. in your blood mm -hmm. vessels and so forth. Um, so, so that more oxygen is able to go through and to your muscles, mm -hmm. um, go to and through your brain and itself. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just important to have that because as you know, as we start to get older in life, our lungs start to get weaker mm -hmm. and weaker in the ability for us to push through all of those, um, different diseases and viruses and fight through those different things. Mm -hmm is affecting our lungs in mm -hmm. one way or the other. Our lungs uh, has an effect on how we can push through those viruses and mm -hmm. diseases and whatever else. Okay. And as we get older, we, we are less uh, able to do so. Yeah. And so the strength of our lungs matters immensely okay. in the ability for our bodies to fully function okay. and for us to have complete and total healthy health. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's, let's do this, team. Um, just for our listeners, everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching, you know, since we since we've identified the fact of of what we're basically dealing with right now, what we're up against, um, I kind of wanted to help people to get a gain gain a better understanding of what happens um, when we get uh, uh, vaccinated. Okay. Okay. When we get vaccinated, um, and and of course, there's some places that it's becoming uh, mandates in, in certain places, and of course, I think we just had a vote. I was looking at the newspaper here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, the home of the original mm -hmm. Black Wall Street, and it, and it was um, shot down, I think, by the city council. There were some presentations and some people who are um, who are very adamant about it being a mandate that if you go somewhere, you have to have a mask and so on and so forth. Um, there are some people on the other side who are saying this is a this is a, goes against our freedom and our rights, and we shouldn't have to. And and um, I believe the Constitution it basically supports that. Um, but but I guess uh, every everyone has a position far as that's concerned but um just really uh putting that in perspective as far as what a a vaccine does you know uh what a vaccine does uh um uh, sharita could you could you just give us a quick foundation as far as what what it is you know when we when we go and get a vaccine usually what is it that that we are receiving what are what mode what are we putting into the body and and, and what are we looking for as far as a response um, from 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 the body with uh, taking a vaccine? What are we looking for? So I guess we need to start a little bit early in the aspect of 
a vaccine being created, especially right now with COVID-19. Mm-hmm. And it's based off of, of, of a spike protein. And I know people have heard spike protein kind of over and over again. Um, but what matters about these spike proteins on the virus in itself, that is how that particular virus is able to get into your system and attach itself to your body um, and where your T cells, your helper T cells, those things that fight infection, are not able to, uh, that are supposed to fight different viruses, are not able to because of this COVID-19 um, that's happening right now. So once that happens, um, and they see that, these scientists see that there is, you know, a particular spike protein um, in itself, and this protein, um, which is used in itself to attach to the cells, um, and it starts the infection process in itself, um, they have they create um, vaccines for that spike protein, because they know that spike protein is going to infect you or has the ability to affect you, infect you. And so they create a vaccine to prevent that spike protein from bi- binding to your body is what they're doing. Okay. So that's the basis of a vaccine to prevent that that spike protein that's in that virus from binding to your body and causing a wreaking habit. Okay. Keeping keeping it from binding. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in the past, when we talk about vaccines, the process of um, identifying what's effective, a medical term would be uh, efficacy, right? Uh, we want to mm-hmm. find out if this is effective. Um, So they usually have basically, um, I guess, test subjects, people who uh, volunteer to take the vaccine so we can see how their bodies respond. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. usually um, whatever the challenge challenge is, it's usually introduced to the body so the body can start to produce antibodies. Okay. And um, in this instance with COVID, um, is it being introduced to the body so that the body can start to produce antibodies? Yep, you got it. Okay. The way that you're saying it is what happens after that vaccine gets mm-hmm. into your body. Mm-hmm. And itself, it does. It produces okay. antibodies. It, it produces antibodies. So, okay. Yeah. So, so, and so the thing that I want to lean on is this right here. Um, for those people who have had a problem with the vaccine, you know, I know we've heard, um, you know, I mean, um, the numbers are low as far as uh, fatalities and people who actually received the vaccine. Some people got it and they felt a certain way after a while they weren't well. Um, it is a possibility. Let's just say um, if a person caught COVID that obviously their immune system, it, it, it was pro- it could have been uh, compromised already. Absolutely. And for someone who is not well, mm-hmm. who went and got the vaccine for, for those who are worried about it, who are concerned, um, mm-hmm. If your immune system is in, in such shape that if you that you could catch COVID, then um, it could probably be a challenge for you getting a vaccine as well. But it could probably be a challenge, but it's probably worth it for some people, you know. And that's for I'm going to say um, um, I think everyone has to be honest about their own health. Oh yes, you know you have to be honest about your own health. And 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 I guess if you're looking in the future towards getting the vaccine. Um, Even if you're against it and you're thinking that you may have to do it. um, The thing I want to I want everyone to understand is that there are things that you can do to prepare your body to even successfully receive the vaccine and not have a detrimental effect upon your health. There's Mm -hmm. things that you can do right now. So your body can respond to that and produce the antibodies. So let's just say Mm -hmm. if I'm not ready, my body's not ready. I got all these other things going on. You know, and and it's still requesting that my body function and uh, that my immune system responds, but my body is not in good shape. You know, I have so many other challenges going on. I haven't taken care of myself. Mm -hmm. So it could be a little challenge. I don't know if it could be a fatal. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. But let's just Mm -hmm. say if your health is really, really bad and you got problems with your respiratory uh, system already, um, then it could be fatal as far as COVID is concerned. Oh, yes. You know, and. And so I don't think that, you know, we don't we don't want to look at it from a, a, a grim place and saying that, uh, you know, there's no way around it. But we definitely want to identify, you know, wh- wh- where's the common ground? Mm-hmm. What is the one thing that can put us in position to deal with covid, um, put us in position to successfully receive the vaccine or booster if it's your choice? Yes. What is the one thing that's going to put you in a position 
to deal with COVID, take the vaccine, take a booster, even if you decided to do it eight to six months, that's somebody's, you know, that, that that's their choice. Yes. You know, they have the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. But we have we also have the freedom again to come back to the common ground, which is to provide the body with what it needs so that my immune system is prepared to respond. Yes. However, I wanted to respond. If I wanted to respond to the vaccine, I need to prepare it. Oh, yes. If I wanted to respond to COVID, I need to prepare it. But it's, co it's going to continuously come back to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I am ready. I am not ready. Yeah. You know, I've been doing what I need to do. I have not been doing what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not, look I mean, um, I don't know the way things are happening. And if the thing continues to mutate, mm -hmm. you know, if, um, you know, if, 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 you know, vaccines, are, uh, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Sharita, yeah. what you going to do? You going to take another, you going to do it again? You know, what you going to spend? Your whole life, I was like, well, look on my schedule. I gotta go get my. It's just gonna be on our schedules in a minute. Go so get your vet. Well, I gotta get my vaccine next month on the fifteenth. You know, and the next. Well, that's my vaccine day. Because because uh, this because COVID keeps uh, mutating. Is that what we're gonna do? Uh, are, are are we going to look into some other things naturally? You say what? I said, pray to God not. I don't want to okay. get the vaccine every, other, every six months. I Look, to I'm going to give it the old heave ho. And that's what I'm recommending for our listeners. That's what I'm re recommending for our clients, that we definitely give it the old heave ho. Yeah. That's what I'm recommending for the community. That's what I'm recommending amongst any other choice that people decide to make. Mm -hmm. Let's not keep the same habits, yes. doing every damn thing and just say, I'm going to go take the vaccine. Yeah. You know, let's not keep the same habits. And be pissed off at everybody else who ain't took the vaccine. That's you funny. know, let's go ahead and start promoting better health. And that's one yeah. thing that you, you said. You said you have to be honest about your health. And I think in this country, we tend to want to see a bright, sunshiny picture. And mm -hmm. we don't want to be honest with ourselves mm -hmm. and look at what's really going on. I ain't been doing so. right. I ain't been doing per perfect. <laughs> I ain't been doing right. I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> so, this is not sufficient. So in order for us to take that step and prepare our bodies, we have to be honest with ourselves and then take that next step and figure out what we need to do to get ourselves ready and actually commit to it because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But it is something that you do have to do in order to protect yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, agree. Mm -hmm. I, agree. I mean, we're talking about, um, you know, we're talking about the health of our families. Yes. You know, um, I guess they're saying, Sharita, that um, this is being this is this is babies are transferring it to adults wow. at a higher rate <laughs> than teenagers. Wow. You know, <laughs> and, and I assume that and has. I'm laughing because. Uh -huh. I'm laughing not because it's funny. I'm not. I said I'm laughing not because it's uh -huh. funny. I'm laughing because this was projected. Uh -huh. yes. We try. People tried. The people in the scientific community tried to tell everyone uh -huh. that yes, adults are uh, transmitting it to adults primarily, uh -huh. but it's going to get to the point to where it's going to be adults transmitting it to kids and kids transmitting it to other kids and so forth, and then those kids transmitting back to adults. Yeah. That is how those mutations occur uh -huh. in itself. So. I'm not surprised that babies are transmitting it to adults at this mm -hmm. point. Because, I mean, we've gotten so far into this chain of transmission mm -hmm. further than we should ever have been. This should have been done in 2019 and 2020. We should have mm -hmm. been done with. But because we are cho have chosen and not to take those particular um, precautions, mm -hmm. bettering our health, wearing masks, whatever it might be, in general, we are having a transmission issue, and mm -hmm. that's pretty much what it is. This sector is just mm -hmm. transmitting everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Having so a transmission that. issue. Man, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good way to put it. That's a whole nother show. That's a book. Transmission <laughs> issue. Hey, I get my car, no gas, my transmission's messed up. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this is a problem. We ain't stuck. going no place. We're having a transmission just issue. stuck. So, um, I guess with this transmission issue, um, it's saying that everyone needs to make a uh, a commitment to something. Yes. You know, I, I don't know if I can make everybody or tell everybody to put on a mask. And, you know, I do have to keep in mind and understand that when we're talking about something that's sub microscopic, that means that it may go through cotton. Mm -hmm. You know, that Absolutely. the droplets, you know, it's not even the droplets, right? It's what we call what they're referring to as the aerosol from the droplets. That's when the right. droplets dries up, this is aerosol. Mm hmm. You know, so now it's in the in the air. Yep. So um, I don't know. Maybe the uh, I mean, sub microscopic means it, it goes through hell. They can sneak under the damn door. That's right. You know, if it's mm -hmm. in the air, 
you know, Especially if your house isn't sealed up. Right. So I don't know. I mean, what are we going to do? We gonna, Sharita, we're going to put on helmets like the Jetsons. May have to at a certain point. I always, thought it was it. I always thought it was entertaining when I was a kid. Oh, this looks so fun. Look at them. Got on uh, bubbles on their head. This is, you know, this is fun. Yeah. You know, this ain't fun. This ain't fun. It's not fun. You know, I mean, it's it's really not fun when it becomes, um, you know, the, the when it starts creating the challenges that it's currently creating. Absolutely. You know, thing when you know yeah. when it becomes uh, fatal in some situations. Oh, yes. You know, or almost yeah. fatal in some situations. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just saying, when we get to this point, I think we need to be screaming "better health" as loud as we're screaming "masks." Yes, absolutely. You know, we'll be screaming Agreed. "better health." We need to be screaming "masks." We need to be screaming. We need to be screaming "commitment." That's right. You know, what is the commitment that needs to be made? Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, you know, putting it putting it in perspective. I mean, I, I don't I don't think we want this on the schedule every month, you know, no. nope. amongst all the other nope. things that I got to do. Exactly. You know, um, 20 million things. And, and I got to go get my help. boots to shut. I mean, you're hitting it completely on nail on the head. Uh -huh. In the scientific community, with physicians that I've worked with and so forth, if people would. Do what they need to do to take care of their health. Mm -hmm. Even if the virus touched their family or touched them, whatever else, they would not have, they would not be so strongly susceptible to it in the mm -hmm. fact that it hurts their bodies for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And people are saying even now, oh, if I just get, I'll get the Delta variant and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You may be fine, you may not be fine. Mm -hmm. And you actually you might work. be fine, you might get through it in two weeks and that's perfect and you're great. Mm -hmm. But this is the thing. A lot of people don't understand, as with COVID, the original and the Delta variant, some people who get these particular viruses have long-lasting after effects. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that right. is they have respiratory problems for the rest of their lives. They right. have liver issues. They have heart issues. Things that they have never had to do mm -hmm. with before mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. And to reason that is if you look at all of those football players in college, mm -hmm. the, uh, the athletic directors were so afraid of their um, athletes getting COVID-19 because mm -hmm. they knew that if that child, because I'm calling the child since he was mm -hmm. still in college, right. you know, if that if that athlete still, if that athlete got COVID-19, it could affect their heart. If it mm -hmm. affects their heart, it affects right. their ability to run. Yeah. If it affects their ability to run, it affects their ability to get into a professional level of sport if right. that is their goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they were very secretive at certain points right. on which one of their athletes actually had COVID-19 mm -hmm. because they knew, and on a longer term effect, Man. This could affect their professional career. Man, uh, look. So what I'm saying is, you don't want. Yeah, it, it's it's a. I mean, and that's the case. I mean, you look at the trickle down effects, and I'm just looking at that particular business. Yes. You know, it's education, but then there's business too. Absolutely. You know, where there's um, I mean, uh, I mean, they're in Vegas betting millions on games. Sponsorships. You know, things mm -hmm. have changed. Yeah. You're not going to win. Mm -hmm. So and so is not able. He caught COVID. His lungs are not the same. He mm -hmm. can't play at the level that he was playing. He may be ready toward the end of the season. But, you know, I mean, if, if he's not someone who just bounce, bounces back because his health was pristine, yes. you know, his lungs, I mean, um, even a person being able to, um, you know, run, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have maintained the habits that put their bodies in a, a proper position to deal with, you know, COVID. Yes. You know, oxygen is one thing. Eating habits is another. Oh, yeah. You know, a person's psychology is another. We're talking about mind, body. We're talking about, you know, mind, body, spirit, mind, body connection. Absolutely. You know, is there an addiction? Again, like we talked about, is there an addiction to anger? Is there an addiction to stress? You know, all these things are having an effect upon the body. So um, that mind, body uh, effect, I mean, it's important. And, and like Sharita talked about, you know, looking at the trickle down effects that it has on um, on industry. You know, the trickle down mm -hmm. effects. So, um, man, I mean, that, that's that's um, as you think about people who may have had it or people who could have it. This should give us more reason to be take this serious. Yes. You know, because yes. like you said, Sharita, I mean, a person could go through it and just not be the same. Oh, right. Yeah. They could mm -hmm. all you could already be on edge. Right. Mm -hmm. You could already be on edge mm -hmm. with the with the functions of your heart, yes. your liver, your kidneys. Now I'm in a place where I can hardly breathe for, for two weeks, yeah. three weeks. And there's damage. Absolutely. Look, yeah. damage, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we talk about it all the time. I mean, uh, uh, you know, people pass out, give back, give them some air. Why? They don't get no air. They don't get no oxygen to the brain. They don't get no oxygen to the brain. Brain cells start to die. Yes. Brain cells start to die. leads to brain damage. Next thing from brain damage, you go to brain death. That's right. Over not, not even yeah. breathing. 
-hmm. you know, so it's, it's serious enough, you know, for us to learn more about what we need to do to prepare our bodies to do what's necessary. Absolutely. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't know if we need to be walking around here scared. Yeah. You know, I definitely mm -hmm. believe that uh, we need to uh, adopt the adopt a proper frame of mind. That's going to be my recommendation, Absolutely. you know, for America. Yeah. If I was on the national platform, I would not be crying about, um, you know, people, everybody need to please, please put on a mask. Every, please, I'm yeah. please, please start taking care of yourself Absolutely. today because you will be in danger and your family will be in danger. You know, that's going to be uh, the recommendation from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the original Black Wall Street <laughs> trainer, Bob Caddy. This is what I'm <laughs> requesting of everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching. Take yes. your health serious. Yes. Start doing what's necessary to. Uh, empower your immune system to respond. Yes. You respond so your immune system can respond as well. Absolutely. What you Definitely. think? What y'all think? Tell me. No, I mean, you're right. Mm -hmm. And just kind of to jump back on what I was saying before, those athletes in itself, they, like I said, they may get COVID, they may pass it in mm -hmm. two weeks and be done. But in 10 years, we have no idea how yeah. their lungs and heart are going to be affected. Uh -huh. That is the thing. So if you're going to take precautions about how 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 urgent should I really take this issue mm -hmm. right now? Take it as an athlete. If I'm an athlete who wants to have a professional career in less than 10 years, I'm going to be cautious mm -hmm. because I don't want my lungs messed up and I don't want my heart messed up. Those yeah. two things put me right on the sidelines mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in itself. And COVID yeah. can do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how this is going to affect people right. in the next 10 years, but they already see the effect mm -hmm. only after a year and a half, two years of it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, um, I, I will believe... You know, there's been a few, few, few of my clients who got COVID mm -hmm. and, you know, they did very well with it. You know, it came and it went and I wanted to attribute a lot of how they dealt with it to, you know, their fitness regimen. Absolutely. You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, when they told me, I told them the important thing is that you continue to breathe. Yes. I don't care how yeah. you feel. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you can, you're staying hydrated. And make sure you continuously work on breathing. Yes. Let's make sure we okay. put the things in your body that's going to help with any inflammation, you know, in your lungs. Oh, yes. You know, so that, um, you know, you consistently address that challenge, you know, that can arrive, oh, yeah. um, you know, from struggle. So um, I think a lot of people have, have made it because they made a commitment to um, oh, yeah. being uh, fit. Healthy and fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that and that was basically me because mm -hmm. last year, you know, I had a real commitment to mm -hmm. my health and getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and I caught COVID in mm -hmm. December of that year, but I said this is not going to stop me. And I honestly believe that my success in overcoming COVID comes mm -hmm. from you know me being in the better program. Coach telling me make sure you hydrate, make sure you do the things that you need to do, feed your body the right medicine. Because it's not all about food. It's mm -hmm. not about, oh, is this going to make me feel good? You, yeah. you should never good be note. give, you should never give food an emotion in your body. Yeah. Good note, food Candace. is about good the note. medicine and, mm -hmm. and what your Great. body needs. We cannot continue to burden the healthcare system mm -hmm. this way. Going to them when we're on our last leg because right. they're getting fatigued. <laughs> they're getting tired. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, mm -hmm. we can't do that anymore. We need to start taking our health into our own hands and be our best health advocate mm -hmm. and take this seriously. Yeah. You got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Great note, Candace. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully everyone heard yeah, what she said when she said uh, that we need to basically start looking at our food as our medicine. Yes. So that means that even yeah. before I look at how delicious it is, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the benefit. Am I, is it, a is it even time for delicious? Oh, yeah. You know, for some of you all out there listening, you've been doing too much damn delicious. That's right. And it's time to focus <laughs> on what's best, what's better for your health. And, um, you know, delicious is going to be here, right? Absolutely. But you might not be here. Exactly. Let's say that one yeah. more time, everybody. Yeah delicious is going to be here. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do right, you might not be here. Exactly. You know, we'll get back to delicious. Let, let's get ready. Yes, you right. know, let's get ready. Let's get that, uh, get that pH balance ready, you know, and, and make sure that we're working on our lungs and make sure we're breathing where we're uh, addressing that, addressing those addictions to that anger and that depression and so on and so forth. Yeah, and, um, you know, let, let's, let's work on that. You know, what you think about that, Candace? I mean, what you think about that, uh, Sharita? No, I mean, you're right on point. I can't argue with it in any other way. Everything you said was completely true. I mean, and we do definitely have to do everything that you just said. So mm -hmm. I can't, I have nothing to add. So mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, it's funny. I mean, I don't, I don't, 
you know, as I was sitting here, you know, before the show taking some notes, you know, I've, I've, uh, I looked at the movie I Am Legend last week, you know, when I thought about wow. looking at that, looking at that picture mm -hmm. of New York and the movie I Am Legend and it was empty. Yes. And then I looked at, a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looked at a picture in the movie and it was empty New York. And uh, I thought about I Am Legend but I thought about I Am Legend. Then I thought about um, a virus that's mutating like uh, a AI, Absolutely. you know, like mm -hmm. it's been programmed to do so. You know, mm -hmm. and so, um, I mean, I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's the, uh, what do they call them? The conspiracy buffs, you know, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's could, you know, a hell it's a, this business. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going, we ain't going to dedicate the whole show to the possibility that someone <laughs> has engineered a virus that's going to be consistently mutating. Yes. And, um, right. you know, uh, we ain't going to dedicate to that. I mean, I mean, there's a possibility to continue to mutate. And there's going to be, con there's, you know, drugs that are going to be made and they're going to be sold and somebody's going to make somebody making some That's money, right. you know, I guess uh, to save humanity. If the government's engaged, it's not all about uh, capital making money, but uh, I think somebody's going to be making some damn money. Absolutely. You know, somebody, I don't know who. Capitalism. Yeah, somebody. I mean, and I mean, I, I just have to put that in perspective, you know, um, I mean, we, we, we don't want to be legend. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be legend. You know, like the movie I Am Legend. I don't want to, we we don't want to be legend. No. We don't want it to not be nobody around, you know, and we us to be the only ones who have worked to prepare our bodies to deal with, you know, um, a virus that's operating like it has been uh, programmed, like or some type of artificial intelligence, like it's been programmed to consistently evolve, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like I say, we ain't gonna lean too heavy on that, <laughs> but. <laughs> I just say, what, what's what's the saying? Um, I would rather be a, a warrior in the garden, you know, than to be a a, a gardener in a in the uh, war. Oh, that's a new one, Coach. <laughs> I think I'm too young. Yeah, for that. <laughs> yeah, I keep that close to the heart. You know, I would rather be a warrior in a garden mm -hmm. than to be a gardener in a war. Okay, we have to meditate on that. Uh huh. Know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would rather be ready, basically. Oh, okay. You know, I would rather train and be prepared and still, you know, than, than to be out there in the battle and, and not be prepared. That's true. You know, I've taken the you know information that we're providing and taking it serious Absolutely. and then be out there in the battle. Because there's a lot of people who are getting caught out there in the battle and they didn't take it serious. They ain't been taking serious what we've been talking about, exactly. you know, um, and, and it's a process. Yeah. So but I, I do want to say, um, again, if there's anybody who's listening here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, anybody anywhere in the nation who is interested in learning more about um, what you should do, what you can do, anybody who wants to assess, you know, with uh, myself, with a better program or um, schedule some type of consulting as it pertains to your health and us going on a natural health journey, you know, you can do that. You can always call area code 918-896-5200. You can al always email us at bettereverything3 at gmail.com. You know, that's better everything three at gmail.com. That's area code 918-896-5200 if you, if you want to schedule an assessment, consult, or even if you're interested in joining um, the better program so, we, so that you can learn more about some, some, uh, some healthy, healthy, natural remedies that can prepare your body. Um, I do want to throw this out there as well. Before, before we're coming up on the uh, top of the hour, we got about three or four minutes. I'm going to give Candace an opportunity. She want to talk about a couple of things. She really got a couple of things. One thing I do want to throw out there for everyone who's listening and watching. Um, I know there's a lot of videos that you see and everybody's like, uh, you know, take coconut oil and rub it on your feet oh and, sn and snort uh, peppermint and it'll, you make you or you won't get COVID. <laughs> So, oh um, what's that new one? I don't know. From mectin or whatever. I, I, I don't it's know. It's a horse train, horse dewormer. And people okay. get sick at Walmart. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's the Oklahoma thing. Okay. Yes, that's the Oklahoma thing. All right, Oklahoma. I, I'm just saying that there are you're going to find people all over the internet yes. who are saying do this and 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 my thing has always been uh, the show. Where's the proof? Yeah. Where's the people? Exactly. Since you since you you figured it out. Where's the people at that you've been helping? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people got remedies and it ain't no ain't nobody getting better. Exactly. You know, right. I mean, and the thing about me, I could do everything that makes Robert L. Caddy better mm -hmm. and healthy. But, you know, we got other people who have different bodies, who have different symptoms, who have different challenges. Yes. You know, and there's some things that are very basic. Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, just like that virus is mutating, sometimes we have to start to uh, look at, take different avenues as it pertains to people. Yes. You know, people are different, you know, and their bodies, you know, diff- like I say, the challenges they have are different. Absolutely. So everything that works for everybody is not, you know, it's not for everybody. Absolutely. You know, like I always, right. I always remind my clients, you, you, you need to stay out of other people's medicine cabinet. Uh-oh. You know, stay out of, the, I mean, just because, well, I heard this was good, so I'm going to take it. No, you might need to sit down and uh, talk with someone who can provide you with reason why you should be doing what you're doing and how it applies to you as an individual. Exactly. You know, that's what I'm going to say. I can't tell you what to do, but I'm just saying (laughs) (laughs) that's what I would recommend. But we're coming up on the top of the hour. I want to give uh, uh, Candace, you have anything anything that you want to offer the people about um, anything that's going on with COVID and and going ahead and preparing themselves and also anything that's pertaining to your business and how it's going and how they can reach you. Okay, so, um, of course, as we stated earlier in the show, for sure, um, take your health seriously. Do the things that you need to do to prepare your body to be able to fight. Um, Because, you know, there may be a chance you may get it, maybe a chance you can't get it. You won't get it, but it just, you you can't take that chance. Don't play Russian roulette with your health and definitely take it seriously. Um, Of course, as I stated earlier, I uh, do own a little... Um, home bakery. No, we call it little. We don't do little. <laughs> no, yeah, we don't do little. Well, it's a home bakery. Yeah, we don't do um, little for sure. Candy can cakes by Candace Nash. I do make um, healthy desserts as well as you know regular treats, but everything is from scratch and it tastes delicious. You can find me on um, Facebook, Candy Can Cakes by Candace Nash. Awesome. Yeah. All right, um, Shreda, you got anything you want to close us out with? Any information that? You want to uh, send out to the people. We want we want them inspired. We want them to start getting ready for battle. Yes. Uh, start preparing themselves. Start preparing their families. We'll do. So I kind of want to get prepared a little bit in the political aspect. I want to let you okay, guys know about the things that are happening um, this weekend. Okay. So um, August the 28th, which is Saturday in Oklahoma City, um, there will be a march, a rally um, at, the, oh, at the Oklahoma City um, Capitol in itself. Basically, it's in uh, correlation to what's happening in Washington, D.C., the mm-hmm. 58th Annual March on Washington, D.C. will okay. also be happening okay. on August the 28th. And so, again, this 58th Annual Washington, D.C. March is mm-hmm. pretty much honoring the spirit of Martin Luther King when mm-hmm. he was a part awesome. of the March on Washington yeah. um, many yeah. years ago, 58 years ago. And yeah. so we're going to be having that in Oklahoma City. So if you're interested in joining, please do so. There's a lot of information on blackwallstreet.com. Um, on their website about that particular event. Also, two other things. One, we know that the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The um, eviction moratorium yes. mm-hmm. um, has ended in itself, so which allowed people who were living rent-free during this COVID-19 to not be um, uh, kicked out of their home. Mm-hmm. However, the Supreme Court, through the lobbying, as well as the push of landlords, of cup of a great group of landlords got together, mm-hmm. got a lawyer, went to the Supreme Court and said, we need to end this eviction moratorium because we're mm-hmm. losing money. That's the basic summary of it I can put. Mm-hmm. But you can get more information on it online. But and so that's where the Supreme Court is right now. It blocked the federal eviction moratorium to Biden. He mm-hmm. wanted to continue that mm-hmm. eviction moratorium. Okay. The Supreme Court has blocked okay. Biden it. Biden wanted to continue in it. And in Tulsa, in Tulsa, we do have money. Um, to help with people with renter issues or okay. who need money to pay their rent. So please look at the city council web- website or the Tulsa city, uh, city of Tulsa website. There's information on how to help get your rent paid if you are still dealing with some things. Mm-hmm. The last thing I want to let you guys know is that our um, attorney general has set ex- execution dates for Julius Jones as well as a whole bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have been on the ear of what's been happening with Julius Jones, mm-hmm. um, and he was convicted of a murder of a businessman. Right. Um, but in that aspect, he does have a commutation hearing coming up, I think in less than a month. Okay. Um, and so it's very interesting that our own attorney general wants to set a deadline of death for Julius Jones, knowing he has a commutation hearing coming mm. up that potentially wow. can free him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so forth. So if, if you are you know, for or against this, whatever it might be, please let your state representatives know mm-hmm. your thoughts on it completely um, because it is something that is going to affect not only Julius Jones and his family, mm-hmm. the victims of that murder in general in itself, but it's going to affect people in the, in the future and how we handle uh, execution. 
um, even with a, a, a commutation hearings coming up. So okay. that's my tidbit. Okay. And that's something that um, we may need to pick back up on uh, next week. Yes. Um, talk about that a little bit more and definitely um, maybe we may need to do a portion of our show just as a dedication, just, you know, out of honor, out of respect, you know, to Dr. King and the March on Washington and, um, you know, Dr. King's life, of course. And, and um, you know, go back to putting some things in perspective about, um, you know, where he ended up. Absolutely. You know, one thing about Dr. King and, and the March on Washington and, you know, I have a dream. One thing I always bring up um, is, uh -oh. is that he lived six years after the I have a dream speech and that yeah. his his thought process evolved, you know, just like your thought process evolved from six years ago. Yes. And my thought process has evolved from six years ago. And I think it's important that, you know, whenever we look at the accomplishments of Dr. King um, in his early life, that we also take a look at where he was at when he ended his life. Wow. That's important. That's something that we I'm not going to say that we've been robbed of, you know, we, if, if we don't know about it, we robbed ourselves. I'm not looking for yeah. the uh, uh, educational community. The Oklahoma is not your responsibility to teach me about my hero. That's correct. It's my responsibility to teach my people about it. And I'm telling you right now, study beyond where Dr. King was in 1964. Let's look at his philosophy, his understanding and what he was providing for people before he died. Okay. Because it was probably a gem there that we missed because Absolutely. we were so focused on the dream and we couldn't come into the reality. Mm. So that's something that we'll talk about. That's a whole nother show. But this is the health of the nation again. So glad that you joined us again. Um, Candace, Candace Nash, she joined us. So, so pretty. Candace, you can come anytime on the show. Come in and sit in anytime. Of course, anyone who is listening, if you have a small business, you want to sit in with us, especially if you're a part of the better program, the door is always open on the health of the nation. Get here and join us. Um, share this broadcast. Go to the KBOB 89.9 um, uh, station on, on Facebook and share those shows. We have a, a lot of uh, very diverse shows on a lot of diverse subjects that are being shared. And again, we're, we're, we're coming live from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the home of the original Black Wall Street. So we're rebuilding some things. So please continue to share everything that pertains to radio station 89.9 KBOB. Um, again, Sharita Sweet, so glad our, our community and political analyst, she couldn't make it today, but she called in to make sure that you all got the information. She's committed and she's dedicated to a better community and to a better nation as well. I'm Improvement Coach Robert L. Caddy. This is the health of the nation. Look for us every Friday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. It is getting ready to happen some more. We will see you next week. We got to go. All right. Okay. Three, decide if you want bone-in, boneless, or cauliflower wings, and then determine the delicious flavor you want on your wings.